All right. Did Dragonflight actually sell poorly? Is Blizzard dead? Is WoW dying? Is it over, guys? Oh my god. Welcome back. All right, here's the deal. Blizzard haven't released anything, but quite a few of us are beginning to suspect that Dragonflight may not have sold as well as, say, dead Shadowlands. But this time, I'm actually not particularly worried about that. And it might sound a little... No, I'm not either. I, I'm not at all, because... I actually do think Dragonflight sold poorly. I would assume that it did. Like, absolutely. Insane, but that's actually where I'm at after taking in- It deserves to sell poorly. It, it just came out of two shit expansions. And also a massive scandal. There was like worldwide news. All that I can see online. Now, the next time that we'll see some hard data is, of course, the next Activision Blizzard Ooh. earnings call. But even that will be rather vague. Ooh, we gotta now, watch I've that. already got our team working on a statistical analysis of season one participation as compared to the past. I love We the actually graphs. can pretty much go apples to apples with some launch timings of Shadowlands, yep. which is great for the data. True, true. But while the team's working away at that, let's have a chat about what's going on. And today's sponsor. Us and our newly revamped Patreon loot, which for the first time ever has got a journal. Yeah, we actually have a, uh, we have a- I'm gonna be honest. I was so worried that Bellier's sponsor was the microphone that he was using. I was like, oh God, no one's gonna buy it. This is the worst ad. I'm like, oh fuck. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Custom notebook for this month, which I'm super, super hype about. And um, we've actually also revamped quite a lot of what we're doing with the loot. Um, so in addition to the notebook, you'll also get this beautiful lantern pin. I, I cannot wait to get these in. They look so goddamn That's awesome. Nice. So the lantern pin and some really, really cool art that is part of a special project. But yes, quite a lot of new things and... Uh, they will be, yeah, they'll be on our Patreon. So if you subscribe on our loot tier through the end of this month, you will get that in addition to a bunch of other uh, goodies too. You can check it out down below. Thanks for uh, supporting us. And let's get to the video. Okay, why am I- It's weird to see somebody with a house and they have white walls and there's not dirt all over the walls. Like, you know, like pictures drawn on the walls. It's just weird to see that. Vicious. I mean, yeah. surely, given this channel's existence, I should really be a lot more on the side of, hey, everyone, the game's going great. Jump aboard. Use my creator code. We don't have those. But yeah, I wish. piece of evidence or suspicion number one is the 30 day free game time promotion, which is what they should have done for every fucking expansion that's ever been released. If you buy the expansion, you should get a free 30 days. Yeah, it was pretty simple, actually. Quite shortly after the expansion came out, they bundled in a free month of game time. Smart. Uh, with it for new purchases. Certainly felt a little bit rough for some people who just missed out on that, but obviously it is them trying to sweeten the deal. It's an incentive to get people to come back to the game. Yeah. Now, this idea of doing a sale very quickly after a game comes out or some sort of promotion is often kind of seen with games that struggle a little bit. Yeah. One of the things that's very critical is getting that, like, uh, well, critical mass of users in your game. I mean, even take some of the more high-profile games that have had issues after launch, such as, uh, say, the Battlefield franchise, where they've had decently deep discounts fairly shortly after launch. So, seeing this game time promotion combined with one other thing, well, two other things, certainly had people a bit suspicious. And another one of those things is the Dragonflight free trial. Now, this is actually something that I think is a really, really good idea. I've been saying this for years. Not for years, ever since I started playing Final Fantasy XIV, that one of the reasons why Final Fantasy XIV is so great at retaining players is that it gets players invested into the game without having to spend money. And then they continue to spend money because they are already invested. Basically, they have a better the free, free trial. trial. Let you start the truth is, like nowadays in gaming, you have to have a free trial. You have to have a free version. Every single game has that. Like, whether it's PUBG, Fortnite, fucking, uh, let's see, how many other, uh, I think, I think you can play Fall Guys for free now, too. Like, everything is free. 
back their evoker, take them through their Pod, intro yep, zone, zone, and uh, through to the end of the waking shores at uh, level 63. Pretty great. I'd say that maybe the evoker's not the biggest draw for this expansion in the way that the Death Knight or the Demon Hunter perhaps were in the past, but That's I think true. it's a pretty good way to get people a slight... I think Evoker has the same amount of hype to it that Monk did. ...of modern-ish World of Warcraft pretty quick. So a really good idea, but also something that to a lot of people just felt like, oh, why, why are you doing this promotion? Now, I would say that surely pulling off something like this would require a decent degree of planning internally. Yeah, I would so assume it may so. actually be the case that they thought it say made the most sense to have the game come out. Maybe they felt quite strongly about the quality of the game, which I think would be fair enough. I would hope so. And then so. maybe they put this free trial in to try to get us players who are, you know, the vanguard, who generally have had a good impression, be able to say to our friends, hey, you know what, this expansion's actually really good. Oh, and by the way, look, they just announced the free trial. It's even better. You could see how that would make a degree of sense. Yeah. Now, the other thing that's kind of a piece of evidence of maybe not the best sales in the universe is no big sales announcement post-launch. Well, yeah. of course that's why. I mean, listen, if, if WoW hit 12 million subscribers again, Blizzard would find a way to let people know about it. Yeah, you announce whenever you win, and you don't talk about whenever you lose. It's smart. Yeah, pretty simple. Whenever Shadowlands came out, Blizzard quite rapidly said that it had sold through 3.7 million copies. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not day one sales, of course. That is day one sales and pre-orders combined into one thing. Now, I haven't done that this time around. Generally, the way that it goes in corporate communications is that if they bring your attention to something, that means it's really good. Yes. If they actively don't bring your attention to something, then... Well, yeah, maybe they don't want you to think about that as much. Another right. thing then that I sure. should mention is lower Twitch sense. viewers. Now, this is one of those things that we can actually use um, because you know, it does mirror people actually having interest Skin in the game. Me. Now, there's a difference between uh, Shadowlands and now. There's actually a few. As an example, the splitting out of the Twitch categories, because yes, uh, Classic is now a different Twitch category. No, it's not. Uh, this was a mistake. Uh, Blizzard confirmed it was a mistake. I talked to them specifically about it, and that is no longer the case. So, WoW is one category. We are in one direction. To, uh, to modern. So, there is, that is one thing. However, mm -hmm. when you actually look at the number of channels streaming World of Warcraft from these, essentially like the, the little launch uh, period between Shadowlands and between this expansion, you do find a similar amount of views, but it is lower for Dragonflight. And you find- I was really kind of surprised about this. I thought that there would be a lot more people watching the game because they were giving away that mount. And the fact that they didn't have as many people watching the game because of that mount was really surprising to me. Yeah, these are peaks. So yeah, yeah, let's look at this data. Uh, this one right here is Battle for Azeroth. This is Classic WoW. Uh, this right here is Shadowlands. Uh, this here is, I believe, uh, this is a seven, sorry, 8.1. Uh, this here is the Race to World First. Uh, this one here is, uh, I think, oh, that must be Sepulchre right there. That is the pre-patch of the expansion, and that right here is the launch of the expansion there itself. Half the channels streaming the game, mm -hmm. which certainly is a little bit spooky and a bit of a factor there undoubtedly can be the splitting out of categories on Twitch. Uh, but overall, when you combine that with all of the I was expecting a lot more people to watch WoW because of the drops. I absolutely was. Motions that they've been running. Um, other little tidbits like that. Because never recently done it before. Lowering the recruit a friend uh, threshold to be a... Like, it even includes an account which actually does have an active character. It's just now it's uh, one year of lapsed time is is now what somebody needs to be to be eligible. So... It's just okay. felt like if they've had a lever to drum up a little bit more interest yeah. in the game, they have pulled that lever. Which then, is a good thing. I think this is a very good thing. And uh, this is something we did in our New Year stream. Uh, me and Matt just compared some. Somebody actually brought up a really great point. Uh, is that 
Twitch viewership is down as a whole number. So I'll see if I can find some data on this. Uh, Twitch tracker. Uh, let's see if we can find this. Uh, concurrent viewers, uh, hours watched. Maybe we can look at this over the course of, yeah, right here. As you can see that overall Twitch viewership is down, but those peaks that we were looking at right here, the 2019 peak was classic WoW, and then we're looking at 2020. Uh, this is about whenever uh, this is whenever Shadowlands came out. At this point right here, uh, Twitch was higher than it is now. So yes, and because obviously well, what I'm saying is that BFA and Classic WoW were not affected by COVID, but Shadowlands and um, basically just Shadowlands was affected by COVID. So the numbers for Shadowlands would be inflated artificially because of COVID. And that was a very good point you brought up. That's true, and it's also reflected in the data. Very simple numbers, uh, basically, like how many first like 10 days ish t uh, you know kills on yeah. uh, the first boss of Vault of the incarnates have we had versus say the nathria first boss shriekwing and the numbers there definitely surprised us in how they really did not look particularly good for dragonflight even though i think we would contend that it's a really quite excellent raid in an expansion i think that anybody who is a wow player who's unhappy about this is stupid because WoW is good. It's better that WoW is good than WoW is popular. Because WoW being good will make it popular. WoW being popular will not make it popular. And that has started off excellently, but it just made us think, God damn, that damage is done. So let's talk about that damage. I think the primary reason, and I think this lines up with many things, it is that the perfect storm occurred for Blizzard. I do think that in terms of its overall, you could say, uh, sort of design quality, that patch 9.1 is perhaps its worst patch ever. Now, you may look at many other patches and think, ah, oh, that didn't really... Uh, patch 9.1, worst patch ever. Yes, I would agree with that. We add a lot of content. Surely yes. the, the inst... You know, the... The, 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 the 6.1, the selfie camera patch was not... The, the difference is that the selfie camera patch did not make the game worse. Patch 9.1 took the game and it made it worse twitter patch is worse but no i think if you take a look at patch 9.1 and corthia what was being asked of players the broad design yeah that is essentially a period where people saw okay great there's no artifact power anymore but then a whole host of new problems came in to eat up that space whenever shadowlands yep. came out right that also happened at the same time that uh well you know, there was many dramas that even went into the launch yeah. of Shadowlands. And then we see that their first major that, piece yeah. of follow-up content does in fact still manage to have a lot of designs that very much do feel against the direction of player feedback. Yes. At the same time as this, the dam bursts in terms of... I think that everything turned around. The time that it turned around was whenever Blizzard made it to where uh, Blizzard did 9.15. I think everything before 9.15 was horrible, and everything after 9.15 was generally good, minus a handful of things. The California Department of Fair Employment and Housing's uh, lawsuit against Activision Blizzard. I mean, can you imagine a worse lining up of things? Yeah, it was really bad. To your average player, who maybe hears a bit of the news, the new patch comes out, it's pretty lame, they go back to the maw, it's, it just doesn't feel great to them. They then see all of these terrible things. Uh, that have happened, uh, some recent, some historic, uh, at the company, and, and you know, then they leave. Uh, certainly, if I was to go by the anecdotal uh, sort of side of things, that is when my entire guild stopped playing the game. So, I think that... I think that's the same with a lot of people. I mean, you've got to remember, that was the month that I started playing Final Fantasy, and a lot of people moved over. And I think that it was obviously shown, because Square Enix said that they had to lock servers. They had to, they were like apologizing to people. They had to postpone the free trial. Uh, Endwalker had server problems. So it, it's obvious that an, that an effect was made because it's, it's reflected in both games. That was a real peak. And at the end of the day, 
In a large company like this, uh, you've got to look at when do they change? When do they change and what motivated that change? And I think it's very interesting that patch 9.1.5 smart guy. Uh, is Bellier's the patch smart where guy. they decided to start making the game a totally hell of a lot agree. more friendly. And yes. certainly after the fact, they keep on in interviews talking about 9.1.5 being the time where they changed their design directions. Yes. Uh, quite evidently early on enough in the Dragonflight uh, development process to work out a bunch of that feedback to the game. And I think that's a large part of why Dragonflight is really a far more player-friendly expansion than what we've been used to. But ultimately, I think we have to expect the numbers going quite bad are what suddenly motivated that change. In an Absolutely. I think that if people had stuck around and kept playing Shadowlands, we would be farming aspect power right now. A hundred percent. Because they wouldn't change anything. You've got to remember, like, when was the last time they had a massive paradigm shift? It was after WAD. And and why was Legion so good? It's because they were like, well, this obviously isn't working. Everybody's quitting the game. We're not even going to show our subscriber numbers anymore. Like, fuck, we have to change everything. So this already happened before. Around the time of 9.1.5. For a lot of people, then, that was it, you know? It broke the row habit, and it's yeah. gone. The and I think that's a very good point, is that, you know, the developers can say, like, oh, well, we've had this in the pipeline, and, like, oh, we can't change things, and, oh, this is the way the game is designed, and, oh, we can't change this. Bro, like, if you quit the game, they're going to change it. Like, that's all there is to it. Like, it's not like they can't do this, or, like, it's impossible, or something like that. No, they absolutely fucking can. And I think Covenants prove that of goodwill being burnt as well. I think that is a, a fairly massive, massive thing. You know, WoW has had rough expansions. It's had bad times, yeah. but it's never had two in a row. Not in a way as protracted as this time. And that's especially the case when you're in an environment where there's really viable competition because there's so many damn games. Yeah. Another thing, and this is if I was to talk a little bit more to the modern times, for a lot of people, it doesn't feel like the Warcraft that they know, right? They see the cinematic trailer, and rather than some extremely high muscle mass orc who's full of sweat doing some big scream with an axe, the sort of, hey, I like beer and heavy metal uh, vibe, perhaps. Yes, exactly. This is, Belior is 100% right. World of Warcraft was all about big, masculine, sweaty, hairy men killing each other. And it was fucking beautiful. So, like, whenever you have some skinny little dragon boy, Hi! Oh, look at me! I can cast spells now! <laughs> what the fuck is this shit? Like, let's get back to fucking this right here! Come on, man! Yeah, absolutely! I mean... They, they did change the way it's designed. They changed, like, the fundamental, uh, what's the word for it? Like, the, the vibe of the game. Um, you know, kind of merging in some of the Frank Frazetta style stuff. Yeah. With, uh, well, I mean, obviously, he's a pretty large inspiration for Samwise and Chris Metzen and all that stuff way back in the day. That's maybe the sort of vibe, feeling, that got them into the Warcraft universe. And for a lot of those people, well, in the same way that Shadowlands didn't feel like that because of what Shadowlands' lore was like. Dragonflight, I think... Well, it's like we had one character that was a little bit like that, which was Denathrius. And then Crexus is like, oh, he's dead. But So he's gone. Like, well, then now what the fuck? And that's it. It's significantly more successful in its lore. And lots of it really is diving into the Warcraft mythos uh, that it really is in a way that I'm actually enjoying tremendously thus far. But for a lot of people, the marketing and public positioning of this expansion did not exactly reflect the core part of Warcraft that they have. Yeah, it. W people said it went woke. They said, oh, wow, the game is woke now. It's not the same as I remember it. It's not the way it used to be. As a bit of a common touch point. Yes, War of Draenor was a weird time travel expansion, but it was full Warcraft. Oh, it was, it was time travel, but like we traveled back in time to where we fight and we kill a bunch of big, hairy, sweaty men. That's it. At the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. Then the Legion, it's like, what's one of the main characters in Legion? A big, hairy, sweaty man 
with horns and wings. And then he's trying to kill an even bigger hairy, sweaty man with a fire sword. If, it, if everything fits together. That's, I mean, not to say that just orcs, but it's it's tone, right? Yeah, uh, the tone, for sure. We look at this and we are diving really with the dragons more into material that has been expanded upon in like additional universe mm -hmm. um, sort of places that most people aren't really aware of. Yes, people know there are dragons in Warcraft, but I really don't think the dragons have been the reason why people have came to World of Warcraft. Now, I think this expansion is presenting a good reason for that to change and portraying them in a way that I'm really enjoying. I think it's great. I think the new story is good, for sure. But for a lot of people, that initial feel wasn't there. And that means that it's all going to come down to the wait and see effect. And this is where I bring up Mists of Pandaria. Mop's launch was kind of rough, right? I mean, there was the whole, you know, oh, so many daily quests, what will I do? There was that whole thing. And there was also people who looked at it, rolled their eyes, and decided they wanted to have nothing to do with it. I thought it was fucking stupid. I was one of those people. Obviously, I didn't quit, right? But I, I was like, what do you mean, Mists of Pandaria? Like, this is a joke in Warcraft 3. Why are we doing this? Yeah, you take a look at the subscription numbers for Mists of Pandaria, and what you actually find is that in the period of time after patch 5.2, when you've got 5.3, you've also got 5.4, um, the numbers actually bump up a little bit. There's and that was a time Thunder where King. the story was really pretty great. I mean, could you yeah. not watch the patch 5.4? Uh Again, numbers go up. Who's on the screen? A big, hairy, sweaty fucking guy. I mean, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> there you go. You're onto something. I am. Uh, what the fuck is this? Launch oh, there trailer we go. and think, fuck yeah, this looks like a really cool patch. I think even the people who were maybe a little bit confused. I actually thought that subscriber numbers went up in patch 5.2, the Thunder King. Which again, by the way, <laughs> who's the Thunder King? about the inclusion of the Pandaren in this universe, they probably will have seen that patch trailer and thought, oh, hey, yeah, that's, think about that's that. Warcraft, Big man. Harry I man. want some yep. of that. So I do feel that for quite a few people, there's this wait and see effect. Some of that is about how much does this expansion really resonate with the Warcraft of old? Um, I would say in some ways, yes, in some ways, no. And yeah. I want to see how they escalate things and if they can pull together a satisfying escalation of stakes they certainly were not able to in shadowlands but when i look at the setup that they've actually woven here i do think that they've got a pretty good chance on the other side of course is waiting to see if the game mechanics are good and thus far i think we really have seen that they are fundamentally yes. i think that is the reason why people have not perhaps came back to Warcraft in as super engaged a way as they had in the past, where, I mean, hey, look at the start of Warlords of Draenor. Look at those subscribers spike way, way, way up. But the oh, thing yeah. is that versus the past, as I said, WoW has died many times before, but it's never died twice in a row. And that's the bit that's got us. We've had two dot expansions, a bunch of meta context, uh, sort of context around that that's been rough, that combines in with an extremely competitive game sector where there are way, way, way more games out there. And also there is the effect of new media, right? I think that also a big factor is that a lot of WoW players did not stop becoming WoW players, but what instead they became is MMO players. So they moved over and they played Final Fantasy. I think a lot of them probably tried out Dragonflight. Uh, I think they played Lost Ark, they played New World. Uh, you know, maybe some of these other like smaller MMOs that are like more niche for things that they enjoy, like RuneScape, Albion Online, Tower of Fantasy, that kind of stuff, Guild Wars 2. Yeah, all that stuff. So it makes sense that I, I think that's really what what Shadowlands did is it didn't make everybody quit WoW and go to Final Fantasy. It made people quit WoW and play other games in general, including WoW whenever it's good which is why you see a lot of people coming back and playing Dragonflight now. Versus 2010, when it was just Total Biscuit, Jesse Cox, and a few people doing YouTube videos that were, I mean, in so many ways, a lot more simple than the whole ecosystem yeah. that exists now. Uh, now we're in a stage where information spreads fast. Obviously, strident opinion tends Vegas. to spread the fastest. And you then have the strange thing 
is that updates to stories get far less coverage, right? So let's just say we do a video. It's because the stories fucking suck. That's why. And what are this? Who are the stories about? Sylvanas. Nobody gave a fuck about Sylvanas. Anduin. Nobody really cares. Like, let's get an update to the story of like uh, Garrosh. Remember whenever the Garrosh cinematic came out, everybody fucking loved it. You know why? Big, hairy, sweaty man. That's it. I, I could fucking go on and on and on about this, but the same thing is true every time. To say there's a terrible issue in the game a few months ago, right? We do. Video Sylvanas was mostly popular in WoW because she was a hot goth chick. It had nothing to do with her story. Jaina, for the same reason. Saying, hello everyone, this is a very large issue. We think it should be fixed. And let's say it does get fixed yeah. three months down the line. And then we make the other video saying, great news everyone, the thing's mm -hmm. fixed. Look at that, they listened. Aren't we all happy? That latter video will get a hell of a lot less uh, viewership. It'll get yeah. less engagement. And this is something that is an inherent problem with modern media. Because while... I think it's also a problem that people have already made up their minds that WoW is bad. So they don't want to go back and tell themselves, I was wrong. Because changing your mind due to new evidence for a lot of dumb people is the same as flip-flopping or being a hypocrite. So they're like, oh, I don't want to flip-flop. And so they just, they, they will stick to something that's not true rather than change their opinion. You, maybe if you watch like everything we do or if you create content yourself, mm -hmm. you have in your head the complete picture of what you've made and what you think. But people broadly speaking, will only really know what your opinion is via an extrapolation of the last time they engaged with it. Yeah. Which may not actually be True. up to date with that person's opinion. Of course, this happens with content creators. It happens with news sites. It happens- I remember whenever Preach came back to WoW and played WoW again, that was not a good time. People were so upset about that. With person-to-person -person conversations. But all of it, I think, it's getting a lot faster as the internet gets more and more and more engaging. Yeah. And I do think that's led to a interesting position where they really, really do have their work cut out for them to kind of re-penetrate that side who's just completely bounced off the game. Now, when I think about moving forward, though, and I try to think, well, okay, the numbers are a bit lower, but why, why am I not worried about that? Because I'm not really that worried about that. Um, yes, it's clearly led to less views and videos and all of those things, and it yes. can be a little bit stressful. That's also true. I've noticed that a lot of the WoW videos that I do now are not as popular as they used to be. Like, I, I, I've noticed that with all WoW content creators. It's not just me. It's just that less people are consuming WoW content. And it, it's just like, that's the way it goes. I wonder why? Yeah, well, the reason why is because people are not happy with how the game has been for years. So it's going to take a while for them to build that back up for there to be more people that are in the ecosystem of looking and browsing for WoW content. That's just the truth. But ultimately, when I'm thinking about decisions that are, you know, to the, to the tune of what is the team going to do? What are we going to cover? What are mm -hmm. we going to make? The fact that we have that roadmap is a fairly major part in my decision making. I look at the roadmap and I think, okay, cool. They have a plan. I saw a lot of people being like, oh, it's only, you know, that that's only, uh, uh, those patches are half of them. Yeah, I think those are good. These are great patches. I'm really looking forward to this. I think the roadmap is a, just a universal capital W for Blizzard. There's nothing bad about it. Somebody said in chat that it's a bad spectator game and that's why. That doesn't even make any logical sense because whenever you're comparing, is Dragonflight a worse spectator game than BFA was? No, I would actually argue the opposite. I, I think Dragonflight is better to watch than BFA. So I I'm comparing WoW to WoW. WoW has always been a shit spectator game in a general sense. Like uh, uh, Fall Guys is a better spectator game than almost any other game. Uh, Lost Ark, I think, is even a better spectator game than WoW because there's less things happening on the screen and there's less, there is uh, less disparity between user UIs. Like, for example, you can watch one person play WoW and then watch somebody else play WoW and it's something totally fucking different. We're tiny. 
Well, I'd say, I mean, com compare those to Legion 0.5 patches and the action look pretty damn good. People yeah. seeing features and content are being like, ah, oh, it's, oh, it's nothing. Well, I mean, yeah, they haven't announced what the features and content, uh, you know, is, is going to be. That's but fine. I think that there is a reasonable baseline expectation when you look at that roadmap. Mm -hmm. It's that interesting thing of, uh, you know, are you willing to take them at face value in sort of good faith at this stage i am because thus far they have actually been doing an excellent job of delivering i don't have to take oh, just, just, i don't have I don't, to take anything on faith or at face value if the game's good i play it if it's not i don't play it like i don't need to i don't need to make a nobody needs to make a promise to me i just play the game if it's good or if it's not that's it i'm fairly and i think also like for dragonflight think about how big it is like for example soda didn't even play dragonflight on release like i'm trying to think has that ever been the case for any previous patch at all i do not think so like he played uh obviously every classic one he played every new wow expansion that actually surprised me it surprised me too that was first. Yeah, that's that and that's really sad whenever you think about it because Soda Poppin is I mean he's one of the biggest streamers on the website and he's not even playing the game. Confident that's going to include their roadmap. Of course it'll really Maybe suck I'll play the next if I have to eat those words in six months, but why live in a world where we have to second guess everything we do? It's not particularly fun. Also, I would say the end game is so much more approachable uh, now than it was in the past. Yeah. I mean, at. Uh, and I still think that the end game is not approachable enough. I still think that the bosses are too complex. I, I, I think that it is vastly improved in Dragonflight. I still think they're, they're just still too complex. Like, look at how many people are playing Classic WoW. Like, Blizzard needs to stop tailoring content and making content to be competed with in a competitive setting like in mdi or in like race to world first i'm not saying that they're designed rates for race to world first it seems like they're not but other than that i think like for example like the mythic dungeons there's just so many mechanics like and i'm not this isn't like oh asmon's getting old he's a boomer now he can't keep up with everything no this is a common complaint that i see with people that are playing at the highest levels that it's just overwhelming that every trash debuff, every trash mob has three mechanics. It's nuts, man. The largest criticism one could possibly make is that it can, for a new player, be kind of disorienting. You know, where do I go? What do I do? There's a bunch yeah. that I could do. Ah, right, there is that factor. But other than that, when I think about leveling up new characters, the things that I want to do mm -hmm. in the game, it actually feels like I can just go and do them in a way where I have not felt that in the past two expansions, or indeed in many parts of Legion, I think the game is actually poised to have one of its strongest periods as a game, like, by far. I think I that Dragonflight is going to be a foundational expansion, and that the game is never really going to grow or, or genuinely improve in quality in a substantial way until the expansion after Dragonflight. Because all they really need to do, all Dragonflight has to do, and, and all it really can do is reestablish a new baseline. I think the 10.0 is a better basis for the game going forward than Legion was. I, because uh, 10.0, better basis for the game than Legion going forward. I think that's true. Almost everything from Legion didn't carry forward at all. Yeah, the only thing that really carried forward was Mythic Plus and World Quest, which were both, I think, major Ws, huge, great content. But other than that, yeah, everything else didn't. I think and in the way that Legion it did, it was worse. Was very cool. It did have a lot of content. I always thought its systems were pretty messy, even from the start. I got a lot of flack, uh, you know, during the testing of that expansion or, um, you know, shortly after its launch for criticizing some of those aspects. But I think that, you know, a lot of us who are suspicious over the fundamental designs of Legion, I think we were kind of proven right over the next two expansions. And oh, I was very critical of it too at the beginning and people were mad at me. Now, I see foundations be well built. So ultimately then, I do think 
that this expansion is not seeing the numbers that Blizzard will have wanted. They no. have not been chest beating about an incredible uh, number of, you know, copies sold through because of this expansion, Top Shadowlands. You know that they dude have four stacks. Copies. What the fuck are they doing? sold through oh, because mind. of this expansion top shadowlands you know they would tell us about it because as soon as shadowlands had good news they told us about that yeah were, of course you know very big announcement i believe there was a similar announcement with bfa as well so they've kept it on the hush they've also ran a whole bunch of promotions add that to some of the preliminary data we've seen from uh, from raid it does actually look everyone like we're in a strange downturn but i think it's true be okay because the fundamentals are there. They're just not as exciting to as many people. But much like with Mr. Pandaria, I do think that this can build and grow. So let me know then, what's your experience been? What's the experience of your guild been? The comments are down below. That's it for me. See you next time. Sad video. WoW's dead. That's it, it's over. We had a good run, but unfortunately, that's what it is. Yeah, guys, uh, it's that's life. What can I say? GG. Yeah, Bellier wouldn't have put out this video if the game wasn't dead, okay? Let's be honest. I've had more fun this expansion than any others so far. I feel like most of the people uh, being the only data I have access to, I believe less people are raiding because there are other avenues to gear and progress your character this time around. And also because raiding is just simply not fun. Like, it, it's just not fun. It's not fun to wipe, and then somebody leaves, and then you don't have a warlock, you can't summon them, and then you need to run all the way back, and everything. It's just not fucking fun to raid. It is if you have a guild. Most people don't have a guild to raid with. Most people are pugging. You've, you've got to assume, like, basically, so... um. Look, I, I have said this so many fucking times. I know people are tired of this, okay? Unnecessary. I don't know how to spell uh, that word. Unnecessary uh, uh, time wasting things in, in raiding. Uh, downloading add-ons. Running back to the boss. Having to clear clear too much trash i think there should be some trash just too just less um okay uh let's see here uh summoning new members to a uh, group uh limited battle reses um rebuffing uh, food buffs. Refreshing food buffs. So all of these things are a waste of time. These waste your time playing the game in WoW. And if you go and you look at... This is why WoW rating is dying. I will explain very, very simply. So we're going to have three circles. I've done this many times. I know people are going to get mad because they're seeing it again, but you're going to see it again. That's too bad. Uh, let's go ahead and move that one over here, and then we'll have this one right about here. Okay, so we have three of the premier games. We have Lost Ark, we have Final Fantasy XIV, and we have WoW. Okay, so let's look at how much time you spend actually doing the boss which is what really matters right so in final fantasy we're going to go ahead and just i'm going to make a few of these and then i'll explain what this is and then um we're probably going to make it uh okay yeah i think that's just about right and we'll go ahead and we'll do uh green here and then we'll do brown and then this one will be purple so let's go ahead and look at the colors okay uh this color is the difference between a good 
versus bad guild. Okay. So there we go. Then next, we're going to go back and uh, this is time spent pulling and fighting a boss. And then one more is going to be the green one that I have. Uh, actually, let's put it above. Uh, this is uh, the time spent on logistics. Uh, buffing, uh, you know, like summoning, etc. So this is why WoW rating is dying, okay? Because whenever you look at the amount of time that somebody spends playing Lost Ark whenever they're actually doing a raid, the vast majority of time that they spend is actually pulling the boss. This is even more true in Final Fantasy XIV. That the only thing that you really need to do is zone into the instance and you are immediately pulling the boss. The problem is in World of Warcraft that such a tremendous and massive amount of time is spent purely on game logistics. Things that make it take longer to do the same thing that you can do in another game. And what does this really mean? What this really means is that whenever somebody is going to go into WoW, they don't have to set aside two hours to raid. They have to set aside four hours to raid. They don't raid for one hour, they raid for two hours. They don't need to do it for three hours a week, they need to do two nights a week for three hours each. That is what the problem is. And there are some good guilds that can minimize this time. But the truth is that you should not base the quality of the raid and the experience on whether good guilds are able to overcome artificial time-wasting mechanisms because average guilds are not able to and average guilds are 90% of the player base. That's what the problem is. That is why WoW raiding is dying. It's because you're fundamentally not raiding. You're waiting on summons, waiting to find average. The average is like, I would say, the middle... 70% of the player base, right? So like the top 15% and the bottom 15% throw them away. Let's look at that middle 70% of the player base. Those people are just deleting hours of their time. Yeah, we have to kill crash. We have to buff. There's summon rating too hard. Yeah, and the raids are too it's cutting edge guilds and heroic rating because I'm I'm cutting out top 500 guilds and i'm also cutting out probably like actually all cutting edge guilds like yeah besides cutting edge guilds and besides normal mode guilds i'm talking like people that are pugging heroic people that are pugging normal mode like people that are pugging uh maybe a couple of bosses in mythic those are all in that middle 70 percent of the player base whether it's high or low your green is too large for a while if anything i think it's too small so let's go ahead and let's look. I mean, like, I can go through one of my VODs and I can show you I, I can show you what it's like. Raids are just outdated. Yes, the, design, the truth is that both of these other games, Lost Ark and Final Fantasy, oops, uh, and Final Fantasy, do this better. That's all there is to it. They do it better. So... Uh, show us, please. Okay. Um, let's see if I can find it. Uh, let's go ahead and... It's the best way for me to do this. Okay, I'll do it like this. Okay, so we'll go back and we'll look at the most recent raid. I think that's the smartest way to do this. Let's see if I can find it right here. Videos. I don't know if I'll have one. We're going to have to just wait and see. Okay. Fuck, I don't have a link to any of the raids that I've done. Uh, fuck. View all, maybe? Yeah, I don't I don't have a link. On my Asmongold channel? I don't know if that would work. Um Let let me try and do that. Uh, I, I will link you guys, by the way, I'll link you guys this video. Bellyware makes great videos. Make sure to give it a like, give them a sub if you haven't already. 
right all the political commentary crap um yeah there's a lot of people that like that content and other people that don't uh you can guarantee that i will keep doing it because i think it's better content than just playing a video game for 12 hours a day um okay so that's my goal there we go let's go ahead and look at yeah let me actually do this as my gold gaming and let's see if i can find the worst raid group ever no this is just okay how about if i look at my main channel and the kill the time that i actually started playing the new raid where is it it's like a six hour video or something like that um tell me if i missed it oh fuck channel main yeah i'm on my main channel i just don't know where it is fuck Okay, Asmongold, uh, Vault of the Incarnates. I, I don't know why I didn't just do this at the, at the beginning. Okay, so this is the video. It has 300,000 views. And so let's look. All right. All right, let, let's, let's go, go all ahead. the way go back. Ahead. This is whenever we are Destroy. actually doing trash, right? Okay, so we have five minutes. Five minutes right here. And then let's go to where we're actually pulling the boss. Okay, so that's 12 minutes. So that was seven minutes from joining the raid and actually doing the trash until we actually pull the boss. So then we fight the boss and then the boss takes um, four minutes. And then, okay, so for four minutes, then let's look, until, let's look and see until we get to the next boss. This was at 16 minutes in. And now this is us getting ready to pull the next boss. And let's assume that we pull him as soon as we see him. 25 minutes. So that's nine minutes that's spent between going from boss one to boss two. And then so let's look at how long it takes to kill boss two. And we'll go ahead and look. And these are all pretty much one shots as well. Uh, this is about, let's see here, about six minutes. So six minutes, and then we'll go to the next boss fight. And the next boss fight is actually pretty good. Uh, we're immediately on the next boss fight uh, within only four minutes of doing the last boss fight. So let's go ahead and move ahead. And obviously, I think we wiped on this. Yeah, we wiped on it. It was like some like weird... Oh, yeah. A and then we had to... I remember... Record the whatever happened. Yeah, so we actually didn't even kill the boss because people got disconnected. It was like some weird bug or something like that. So then by the time we actually do a real pull onto the boss, which is whenever we kill it, like now we're talking at least 10 minutes later, okay? So this is at 42 minutes into the fight. And then finally we kill the boss. And let's see how long the boss fight takes. Boss fight is dead. Okay, there we go. And so our boss fight's over. And as you guys can see here, um, or wait, oh, the boss, no, the boss killed everybody. Okay. So then there we go. This is you. And let's see how long this takes. Okay. You got it. Here he goes. You got it. It's over. I'm going to just skip ahead here. Oh, man. Okay, so this is a wipe. So we're at 49 minutes and 53 seconds. So let's see how long it takes for us to get to the next poll. Okay, so basically two minutes in between every single pull. You see that? That's a fucking problem. That is a massive fucking problem. Now let's look at Brel Shaza.
This is a Lost Ark raid. Uh, okay, yeah, this is a, a long video, so we're going to get the raw footage. Okay, let's just skip to, like, right here. Okay. So, this is the boss fight here. Let's have... look at the time frame. And this boss takes quite a while to kill. And let's just go ahead and That's skip ahead for a bit. Okay. And... Fuck! We're gonna kill her here? Let's see if we kill her ah. here or not. Oh. Oh, this actually is where we kill her. I just okay, let's go ahead and skip ahead a little bit. I don't think we're... Actually, let's look at how long it takes to get from the second Monster boss. Yeah, long time. Or sorry, from the third boss to the fourth boss. Okay, and... This is... Oh, people left the raid. This is like another day, I'm pretty sure. Second. Okay. He's on the loading screen. So we had to like refill the group. And there we go. Good dick. We're back in. Why wouldn't we be able to beat this one? Okay. 309. Yeah, I don't understand. Okay, so everybody's getting ready. You got. And then how long does this take? Doing. We're basically planning everything out for the fight. But I've done. Okay. I have the cheap. This How is much? taking quite a while. There's only one yellow fire. Or finally, everybody just, starts. Just okay. Oh, and we pulled the fight. And obviously, it was a wipe pretty much instantaneously or very soon after that. Holy. Okay, everybody's dead. All right, so we are at 314. And let's see how long it takes for us to pull the fight again. 4,000. We're in the fight again, within 15 seconds. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's see it again. Uh, let's go back, okay, we'll, we'll do one more. All right, so here we go. And, all right, 3.15.55, fight ends. Okay, I'm just gonna stay with you guys from now on. 3, 16, 36, fight starts again. And even Final Fantasy is faster than that. WoW has so much unnecessary time dilation. It is absolutely brutal. It is so bad that it's killing rating. Because every other game does it better. It's five people versus 20 or 30. Can't compare. D oh, so... <sighs> kind of true. That's true by like 5 or 10%. You are absolutely right by like 5 or 10%. But what about the other 90? Yeah, it's crazy. And wow, you pop a soul stone and it takes 30 seconds. But what if you don't pop a soul stone? Why do you have to pop a soul stone? Why? There's no reason. It's just a waste of time. And and what if somebody accidentally releases? Oh, well now, now we have to wait for uh we have to wait for us now we have to get a summoning stone to summon them over there. It is a massive waste of time and this is why nobody raids in WoW anymore. This is evident in every single way.
Like, look at the amount of people that are raiding every single tier. It goes down constantly. I'm sure Vault will be better than Sepulchre, but that's not really saying a lot. We need a Dark Souls bonfire instead of every boss room. What every boss room needs is it needs a summoning stone and a respawn point right in front of it. Every single boss room, cut the trash in half, cut the trash down to like 20%, 30% of what it was, and then you actually get to play the game. Everyone but you writes? Well, no, I'm, I'm looking at like the Warcraft log parses. I mean, like it, it's not, it, it's public knowledge. Next is way more trash in dead time. Modern retail rating, it's crazy popular. Same with classic raids. Uh, Nax is very popular because you don't wipe a lot. That That's why. If you had to wipe all the time, you would see less people doing it. That's why Sunwell was way less popular. It's because you spent more time running back and the time dilation happened and then people stopped playing. Of course Nax is popular because you never wipe. These problems don't happen because you have everybody there the entire time. Just wait, yeah, just wait till Old War. Yeah, you, you'll see. What's the comparison on Raid Finder versus Normal, I wonder? Oh, I don't know. All I'm saying is that I think this is what's killing the game. Uh, much more so than a lot of this other stuff. Is whenever you go through and you look at how fast these wipes happen, it's just night and day. Like, look at this downtime. And the only time that we have downtime, by the way, is whenever people are waiting to try to figure out what happened or what went wrong. Here we go. It's a wipe. Six minutes, 20, 20, uh, 23 seconds in. Okay. Or I need two orbs. And so if I get three, I can get one more. And if I get one, I can get one more. Right? And this is all the people waiting. White. I'm just gonna skip ahead. And if four, I need two whites. One per, less, a little bit more than one minute of downtime, that was intentional by the group. The group could have pulled within like ten seconds of wiping. They chose not to because they were trying to plan something out. Classic has way more downtime, bigger raid pop, never did the MMO combined though. Classic WoW has a large raiding population right now because you don't wipe in Nax. You're not having a bunch of wipes and Nax. It's an easy raid. Look at what happened in Burning Crusade. Whenever the Burning Crusade raids came out, the game started dying. So easy equals good. I think that while raids right now are too complicated and too hard, I do think so. Yeah, 100%. Question marks? It's funny how people don't, don't see this. I, all, all I need to do... Uh, Warcraft logs. Uh, I mean, I, I'm just, I just read the data, right? I don't need to, uh, to prove anything to anyone. Let's see if I can show you guys. Is there a way for me to check how many people have parsed over the, uh, maybe it's under statistics. Oh, fuck. I don't know if I can find this. Maybe statistics here. Bosses, all item level. Range of one day. Yeah, I don't know where they found all of these reports, so... I'd have to look. I, I know websites, or sorry, uh, different places have shown it. Oh, it's Ironforge Pro. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Um, uh, log analyzer. No, that's not it. Demographics. Hmm, how am I? How were we able to see this? Because I don't remember yet. Yeah, wh what the fuck did I click to show this? I don't know. Right there. 
Uh, also, oh, also, this is it. Yeah, there we go. So if you look right here, uh, this is 620. This is whenever Burning Crusade came out. Karazhan was really popular. And then obviously games started dying. Games started dying. This is like Black Temple. Sunwall comes out. Game is like super dying. And then Nax comes out. Obviously, it's really popular because it's easy. Yeah. Now you have to be competitive. That takes a lot of people away. Yeah. I mean, this is just, and it's the same thing with Nax, right? Again, Nax is the same thing. Like, Nax and Classic WoW game was dying. Why was it dying? Because it took too long to play the game. Correlation is not causation. Well, how many causes do you think that... Like, how many different graphs do I need to show you before you can admit the obvious truth that making people waste multiple minutes in between polls for no reason is bad for a game? Like, I don't know how many of these, like, how, like, it's just crazy. Yeah, that's why WoW is dying. That's why WoW's rating scene is dying. That's why people don't take it as seriously anymore. It's because of the time dilation.